When games come out, they are expensive, and sometimes because of this we miss them, but the monetary entry point for these PlayStation 4 games has gone way down. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, the best PS4 games that are now dirt cheap. Quick disclaimer, this list is going to be $20 and under games that are really big, awesome games that don't really have any business being this cheap. The prices do fluctuate, so they may be lower than noted in this video, because these titles now go on sale fairly often too. Number 10 is Doom 2016, which has every right to be around $40 at this moment, but it is $20, 1999. This was, in every way, a huge development in the first person shooter genre in the franchise's lifespan. Doom 2016 added so many interesting mechanics while retaining the things that make Doom Doom. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like Doom. It's got every hallmark of Doom, the visuals, the speed, the weapons. But they also added a bunch of interesting chaining mechanics, and the multiplayer is great. Again, Doom costs $19.99 now. That is absurd to pass up. Number 9 is Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection, which is a collection of the first three Uncharted games. And in my opinion, these games are all good enough that they would justify the price that they're selling it at, which is $9.99 on their own. While the first one is a little bit shakier than number two and three, these are games that really made a lot of the conventions of today's modern third-person games into conventions. Yes, it's very derivative of Tomb Raider, and the new Tomb Raider is very derivative of it. It's what happens when genres develop, and this is such a big leap in not just the exact genre it occupies, but a lot of adjacent genres as well. Again, 10 bucks for three fantastic games. That's $3.33 a game. Number eight is Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. This game was incredibly well reviewed for all the right reasons. It is packed with content, and you have so much agency as to how you are going to traverse that content. The world is very detailed, very strange, and yet set in the past when a lot of the strangeness is a lot less explainable. The characters are really the element of the story that shines the most. The story is quite rudimentary, actually. But it's the gameplay that really brings you to the Phantom Pain, in my opinion. It's such a good mix of stealth, open world gameplay, and outright action that it totally justifies a $20 price point. $19.99 is very low for such a huge wide, expansive, and immersive experience. Number seven is Rocket League, which is, as the developers have described it before, soccer but with rocket-powered cars. If you've ever seen a match of this game go, there's no other way to describe it. And although its first release was way back in 2015, there are over 40 million players as of the beginning of 2018 playing this game. This is one of those games where even if you don't understand the appeal, it's worth a spin because playing it is highly addictive in a good way. It's just a fun, goofy, weird game that manages to do exactly what it sets out to do really well. And at only $13.99, it's certainly worth giving it a shot. 40 million people can't be wrong. I mean they can, but they aren't. Number six is Stardew Valley, an homage to the Super Nintendo Harvest Moon series that brings a lot of new elements to the table, develops the genre, the idea, the entirety of it. Stardew Valley turns it into a little bit more of a simulator and a little bit less of a narrative game, but it's kind of already not too far in either direction, so Stardew Valley's concentration on the gameplay elements of it while maintaining the more nostalgic aesthetics of the old school Harvest Moon games, it's a good choice. And a lot of the things added to it actually remind me of Minecraft, except for it's really nothing like Minecraft. It's there's a lot of games that are like that actually, except this is a farming simulator and it's fun as hell. It's also only $14.99, which is a steal. Number five is Bloodborne, a masterpiece of work from From Software. It's difficult to say that sentence. This is a game that took some of the conventions of Dark Souls and turned them on their head. It basically made it so that there's no good reason for you to use the shield, which encourages some very different gameplay mechanics. Your strategies change. Also, the world that Bloodborne occupies is very different than the world of Dark Souls, much more along the lines 
lines of a Lovecraftian nightmare rather than a medieval fantasy one. It plays a little bit like a faster Dark Souls that's more oriented toward dodging than blocking, and that's great because that gameplay mechanic, that combination of strategies is fun as hell. It is also not as hard, but it's pretty damn hard. To say it's not a challenge would be really trying pretty hard to sound as if you're good at games. It's tough, but it's the fun kind of tough. And it's only $19.99, and considering the amount of time you'll spend in the world of Bloodborne, that's dirt cheap. Number four is Until Dawn, the narrative game that is about your choices that many people consider to be much better about player choice than a lot of narrative games much like it. It goes above and beyond to ensure that your choices actually do have effects that all elements of the story eventually have to deal with, which is really commendable. And considering how many branches and how much it actually changes, it's kind of amazing they made a game like this that takes on average 11, 12 hours to play. Even more amazing is that you can buy it now for $5.99, and I would say you should. Number three is Uncharted 4. Obviously if you're wanting the entire Uncharted collection, you'll have to pick this one up. It is, without a doubt, one of the best games ever made, in my opinion. It is the culmination of Uncharted. It goes so much further in its storytelling. The environments are so much more ambitious. The set pieces are bigger, better, and more edge of your seat. And the action, the shooting, the actual bulk of the game is never boring. It's just phenomenal. It's such a well-made game. It has so many elements that are just done to perfection. And at $9.99 to not pick up this game, especially if you haven't played it, I don't, I don't understand your thinking. Number two is Yakuza. Yakuza Kiwami, which roughly translates to Yakuza Ultimate, and with good reason, it is a remake of the original Yakuza using all of the more recent Yakuza technology. It looks phenomenal, it plays phenomenal, and it is just wonderful. The Yakuza series is absolutely just wonderful. It is such an immersive narrative, and although the open world doesn't boast square footage, it is easily one of the most dense, lived-in, and alive-feeling open worlds there is. Going back and redoing the original to the point where it is, I hesitate to say up to snuff on account I think the original is phenomenal as it was, but to bring it closer to the goals of the modern Yakuza games just does so much for it. It is such a good version of the game, and it's such a good game as it stands. It's also only $19.99 now, so pick it up. And finally, number one is The Last of Us Remastered, the horror classic in every way, shape, or form, which is getting a highly anticipated sequel that frankly I'm quite excited for personally, has an updated, much better looking, HD, really enjoyable version of itself on the PlayStation 4 that allows you to go through the absolutely nerve-wracking scenarios that this game puts you through, and truthfully, it really does, and allows you to experience the narrative triumph that is The Last of Us in the best possible quality. And in 1999, to experience really one of the best, it just makes sense. A few bonus games for you, including Life is Strange, the time-bending narrative adventure that honestly did a lot for the genre and is quite a bit of fun, while talking about some very serious issues. That only costs you $5.99 now. Undertale, which is sort of a take on the Earthbound style RPG, but gives you a lot of innovations in the battle system, including not having to battle if you don't want to, doing things to make friends and be nice. It's it's really an interesting game, and it's only $14.99 now. Pyre, which is a game by Supergiant Games, the creators of both Transistor and Bastion, with a combat system that kind of manages to mix the Transistor stuff with a more Dota-oriented approach. It's probably the most traditional setting that they've used so far just being purely high fantasy and they do not make bad games they are really good at making games Pyre's 1999 at this point and finally Night in the Woods which is a narrative game one of the best narrative games might I add it has beautiful art a great story about a working class town and some supernatural happenings there that act as a metaphor for things happening here in our world the real world it's so good seriously this is such worth playing and for $19.99, I don't think you'll regret it. Have you played any of these games? Can you attest to how good they are? Leave us a comment.
comment, let us know what you think, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.